Hi, I'm Victoria James, and we are here at Coke Korean Steakhouse. Here, I am the sommelier and beverage director. I often think that with a corkscrew, the simpler the better. I know there's tons of different contraptions in order to open bottles of wine that can be quite costly. Best is just to get a simple wine key that looks like this. Not the ones that you have to go like that. It's always this. These are the best ones. Um, they're the most efficient and you have less room for error in terms of breaking corks. Okay, so now when we're actually opening the bottle of the wine, you'll see how all the different parts of the wine key will come into play. So this is of course the handle. We have the worm that goes in the actual cork. And then this guy here rests on the lip of the wine to make it sturdy. And then you can just pull right up. And then this one is the second support that allows you to pull up again. Voila. If you have to cut the foil, it comes with a little knife. This is why it's not allowed through TSA and on airplanes. But with wax caps, you don't use this as much. It's more for when you have the actual seals on top here. These wine foils used to be made with lead, and therefore it was quite poisonous if you got any in your glass. And so historically, you should always open it here under this second lip, because if you open it here, now foils are no longer made with lead, but still you'll get little metallic shards in your wine glass and that's really not very sexy. <laughs> Next here we have uh, my little Tastvon. So historically sommeliers would actually wear this on a chain around their neck. And there's some places in the city where they still do this. So if you go to Le Bernardin, all the sommeliers actually still wear this. And what you do actually is that you pour the wine directly in here such, and then you sip it. Not as delicious as drinking it from a wine glass, but the idea here is this originated because they would bring these little cups into the actual wine cellars, so really dark, musty places, and taste it directly from the barrel. Now we don't really need this anymore because we have wine glasses, which is amazing, but I think it's important, especially as a young kid still in this industry, a lot of people will ask me, Where's your Tastavan? Just to sort of be funny. And I think it's important to bring it back from the wine cellar and say, look, I have my Tastavan. It's from Moe Chandon from 1743. So it's sort of a fun way for me to just kind of pay homage to the heritage and history of wine. So next we're gonna move on to decanting here. So this is important because especially with older bottles or maybe some bottles that aren't fined or filtered, there can be some sediment and that's the main reason you decant. Another reason as well is to just have the wine open up or breathe or the third reason is to raise the temperature. You use a couple different items. The candles, you also use, this is a filter. Um, so this is for very fine sediment, or if, for example, the cork breaks, you use cheesecloth. So there are so many amazing decanters. They all serve different purposes, but here at Coat, we're a big fan of this guy, which is the Magnum. With wine, we believe bigger is better, and the reason for that is that, as you'll notice here, the entryway to these bottles of wine is the same, as in it's the same uh, amount of oxygen that can get in. However, there's more juice inside these big bottles. So what that means is that same amount of oxygen, more juice. So it takes longer to age. So literally, wine in a bigger bottle tastes better. So you should only buy Magnums, especially here at Coat, where it's a festive environment. And as such, we use mostly these larger decanters. This is a pour-on. This is sort of like the party decanter that they use in Northern Spain, specifically for chocolate. But it's also cool if you ever just wanna like pour directly in your mouth. That's literally why it was invented. <laughs> with the filter, sometimes I'll use it with the net, sometimes I'll use it just regularly, and this will allow um, just to trap some of the really, really large chunks of sediment. A lot of the wines here at Coat are made from small farmers, and they don't fine or filter, because you don't really want to get rid of a lot of that flavor. However, some guests might not really like to chew on their wine, they probably want to drink it, so the idea here is to catch some of those big particles. And so the cheesecloth here. So I like to cut this into little strips and just place it in the top here of the filter. And this is for those tiny, tiny bits of sediment. So what is this candle for then? So the whole purpose here is that you're creating a light source 
underneath the bottle. So when you're actually decanting, I'll look through the top here and see when the gross sediment or the fine sediment will start to form like a cloud. And the light source underneath illuminates that and that's how I know when to stop. Of course, another essential tool of the sommelier is glassware. And you'll see here we range from these big burgundy stems all the way to spoons. These are regionally specific, so this one is for Burgundy wines, this one's for Bordeaux wines, but of course, we can use them for all different types. And so for this one, we use it for more Pinot Noir-based wines, Chardonnay, for example, as well. This one, we use more Bordeaux blends, or more sort of structured wines, things that are perhaps Cabernet Sauvignon dominated, or more Cabernet Franc. And then, this is our all-purpose glass here at Cote, and you'll notice as well, it has our little Cote symbol on it. And then here we have these small all-purpose glasses, which can be used for wines that are a little bit more reductive in style, or champagne, for example. We don't believe in flutes here. Flutes are inherently awesome, they look very cool, but they're actually not great for enhancing the aromatics of champagne. And even when you go to the champagne region, all of the winemakers will actually serve their champagne, which is wine, of course, in wine glasses. Last but not least, we have this little guy. And this is for a lot of fortified wines like Sherry or Madeira, especially wines you only need two ounces of to really enjoy and taste because they're so powerful and concentrated. And of course here we have spoons. So what's the point of having crystal spoons and what do you do with these? Well, this is to serve a very specific beverage called Ascensia here. And this one is from Royal Tokai. It's from 2003, but it's barely even considered wine. It's more like honey. It's so concentrated in sugar, it's made from just raisins, that as a result, uh, a lot of the yeast dies and can't ferment all of the sugar to alcohol. So as a result, you have this elixir of sorts. And because it's so rich and concentrated, if you were to pour it in this glass, it would become all gloopy on the sides and you'd have to really get your finger in there to really even enjoy it. So the best way to enjoy it they discovered was out of these tiny little spoons. And this way you get the perfect one ounce serving of this incredibly rare, very expensive elixir. Thank you for stopping by Coat and checking out my favorite tools. We hope to see you here soon for a glass or maybe a bottle of wine.